The University of St. Andrews has a proud intellectual tradition that stretches back more than 600 years. It's recognized internationally as a university that's one of the finest in the world for its size. And in fact, the Department of Earth and Environmental Sciences has in a recent UK-wide research exercise been ranked as one of the top five in the UK. The department's research spans everything from trying to describe the tempo and style and pace of past climate changes to addressing some of the more profound questions about the coevolution of Earth and life to interrogating the types of processes that form natural ores and natural resources. It's exciting science, clever colleagues, outstanding facilities. The facilities are some of the finest anywhere in the world. And so this is an ideal setting with a group of people interested in discussing the ideas and testing hypotheses about how the planet has been shaped over the course of its evolution and the processes that will shape the planet in years to come. I study paleoceanography um, and I'm particularly interested in the interaction between ocean circulation and ocean chemistry and how that relates to climate on a variety of timescales ranging from today, uh, so the past few decades, to hundreds of millions of years ago. One interesting aspect of my research is in the Southern Ocean, which is a region around Antarctica that's very important for climate. My research has shown that changes in circulation in the Southern Ocean during the last ice age, 20,000 years ago, resulted in changes in atmospheric CO2 that are very important for climate. The chemistry of the skeletons of, of corals is affected by the climate under which the coral grows. So things like trace elements and stable isotopes vary in response to environmental conditions such as seawater temperature. We can analyse fossil coral skeletons and use those to estimate what past seawater temperatures were. We culture corals over a range of seawater temperatures and seawater carbon dioxide concentrations. And this tells us how the skeletal chemistry would have varied in response to past climate changes. And we can then apply that relationship to fossil specimens to accurately estimate past climates. I study how corals respond to ocean acidification. So this is the, the fall in seawater pH caused by rising atmospheric CO2 levels. And here in St Andrews we culture corals under different carbon dioxide concentrations that mimic past, present and future ocean conditions. We are particularly interested in understanding how corals may respond to the fall in pH that's projected by the end of this century. One of the particular things that I work on is the chemistry of boron and its isotopes to tell you the pH of ocean waters in the past. You can then use that to tell you the CO2 concentration of the atmosphere. Because we're trying to look at the chemistry of trace amounts of an element, we need incredibly sensitive to machines to be able to do that. And we have a couple of those machines right here at St Andrews. We can use these to work out the chemistry of elements right across the whole of the periodic table and also their isotopic composition. And we can take some of that information to then try and better understand how climate may change in the future. Climate changes all the time, but for the average person on the street, they're probably more worried about current climate change. My research focuses more on the last 1,000, 2,000 years, trying to benchmark the controls of current climate change in a longer term context. The growth of trees is a function of environmental conditions. So if environmental conditions for that tree are good, then the tree will put on a wide ring. Um, and therefore, by measuring the rings and other parameters from there, we can measure chemistry and so forth, we can understand climate for the year when that ring was formed. My research is involved in understanding alkaline igneous rocks and it's of vital importance particularly in the commercial field because these rocks contain some of the world's most important critical metal deposits and these are metals which are used in a whole variety of very specific uh, electrical technologies. I've been involved in helping exploration companies understand how to find these deposits how to understand them when they've found them, and then to understand a little bit more about the geological processes associated with extraction and with the exploitation of the resource. I'm investigating high-grade metamorphic rocks from Ontario and northwest Scotland that were formed over two and a half billion years ago. They once were buried to depths greater than 30 kilometers and experienced temperatures above 800 degrees, causing them to partially melt. 
My particular focus lies on the mineral zircon and its geochemistry and how the process of melting affects the information recorded in pre-existing as well as newly formed zircon grains. My research focus is on the coevolution of Earth and life over geologic timescales. Earth is a microbial planet and microorganisms can dramatically affect the chemistry of their environment and have done so over geologic time and have been involved in nearly all transitions in Earth history. We ground truth what we learn from the rock record by doing experiments with modern organisms in the laboratory and also by looking at elemental cycling in modern extreme environments such as in sulfitic lakes and in acid mine drainage which has also been suggested as an analog for early Mars. My undergraduate and dissertation focusing on the Cambrian boundary in South China. Uh, primarily, I'm using ion speciation and uh, sulfur isotopes to work out the chemical stratigraphy at this boundary. From the Ediacaria bacteria and algae dominated world, just after 10 million years later, it changed into a much diversified animal world we are familiar with, known as the Cambrian Explosion. For uh, Mars analog environments, I study the Atacama Desert in Chile. It's one of the few places on Earth that uh, is not completely inhabited by microbial life. I'm really interested in the transition between life and no life, so I study the geochemistry across that, uh, that boundary in hopes to answer questions about Mars and other environments. Uh, I try to answer questions like what biosignatures uh, would be uh, observable if we took Earth and placed it around a star of a different spectral type, or if we uh, changed the atmospheric pressure or changed what biology was like. The models I build of extrasolar planets in Mars uh, only have validity because they're carefully uh, prescribed against uh, geochemical data from Earth. Uh, in particular, uh, isotope chemistry, uh, which is a vital part of research here at St. Andrews. One of the fantastic things in St. Andrews is that we have researchers studying the entire breadth of geological time. That diversity of different skill sets, uh, different research interests, makes the environment here at St. Andrews a really exciting one to be part of.